Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In my previous video, I helped you set up Python and Wing on your computers and you just ran your first Python program. Congratulations! Before I start with today's topic, I would like to give you a little insight into my teaching methods. So basically, I'll upload videos of this length, each explaining a certain topic, and this would help you follow along and you can tune back into any video in case you need help with a certain topic. I guess this would be better than uploading hour long tutorials of Python in which you'd have to go back and forth searching for specific chapters. Furthermore, you can type in any doubts or any suggestions you have for my videos in the comment section below and I'll help you to my highest ability. Coming to today's topic, Algorithms. Now, the literary definition of an algorithm is a process or set of rules to be followed in calculations or other problem-solving operations, especially by a computer. In other words, an algorithm is simply the step-by-step -step description of how to solve a problem. Part of you might be willing to become programmers, but do you know what programming is and why it's called that? A program is basically a very large number of simple instructions and each program is designed to guide the computer to do a specific task. Therefore, programming is simply designing, implementing and testing a computer program. An algorithm can be used to solve from even the smallest problems such as adding two numbers to give the sum to giving actual value of pi to 100 decimal points. Algorithms are not limited to computer science and can be used to solve various problems in several subjects. For example, if the problem is get a glass of orange juice, the algorithm would probably be open the fridge, get a bottle of orange juice, open the cupboard, pick a glass and close the cupboard, pour juice into the glass, put the bottle back in the fridge, close the fridge and drink your juice. Now you could say that, can't you just say get the orange juice from the fridge and drink it from a glass or something? Well, this is where you got me wrong. That is quite vague and the computer wouldn't understand what to do and what order to follow. A computer does one job after the other, just the way it reads one line of code after the other. Hence you should think like a computer and design code the way it would understand the best and most efficiently. Therefore. There are three main qualities that an algorithm requires. 1. Unambiguous. The algorithm should have precise instructions and shouldn't expect the computer to make assumptions. For example, the algorithm cannot say pour juice from the fridge into a glass, expecting you to know that the glass is in the drawer. 2. Executable. The algorithm should be executable. In other words, you should be able to do it. For example, the algorithm shouldn't ask you to get juice from the drawer, which is not possible. 3. Terminating. The algorithm should finally end. For example, the program should ask you to full fill the glass and put the bottle back in the fridge and drink the juice, but shouldn't just be like, pour the juice into a glass and end there without telling you what to do next. Now for a more complex problem. Let's say that you want to buy a car and would use an algorithm to choose one. Assume that there are two cars, A and B. Car A costs $13,000 and gives a mileage of 15 km per litre of fuel. Car B costs $15,000 but gives a mileage of 25 km per litre of fuel. Now, assuming that you would use this car 80,000 km and that each litre of fuel is a buck, Let's calculate how much money you would be spending over its lifespan. So in total, car A costs $18,333 while car B costs $18,200. And after calculating the following, you can see that in the long run, car B is less expensive than car A. And this is how algorithms can help in solving complex problems. The next step is translating the algorithm to pseudocode. Pseudocode is the language halfway between natural language and a programming language. Pseudocode is made by breaking the problem into smaller steps and solving them individually. In this case, you would want to calculate the total cost of both the cars to decide which one to buy. The total cost is the purchase price 
plus the operating cost. The operating cost is the number of kilometers to drive divided by the mileage per liter of fuel times the price per liter of fuel. While choosing what car to buy then, if price A is greater than price B, you would buy B or else you would buy A. This pseudocode can easily be translated to the Python language which is called the source code. If you're already done with algorithms in Python and you have come to see how to draw them, I'll be making another video and I'll put the link below. Now that you're done with algorithms and pseudocode, we can move to the bonus section of this video. Remember I said that I would explain the print function in my previous video? Well, so here's exactly what we typed in our previous video. Here, the word print is a function which is followed by brackets and whatever you would want to print should be inside the brackets. And as you can see, there's quotation marks. The quotation marks are for you to tell the computer that what you want to print is in between the quotation marks. So whatever you type in between them, such as hello world or in the previous case, hello Vishnu would be printed. And these quotation marks have a significance, which I'll explain later. Coming back to Wing Personal, last time we had only printed words, hello world. Now we can also try and print a number, like 7. Python is also capable of doing simple operations. Like print 3 plus 4 would give you 7. Similarly, 3 times 2 and 14 out of 2 would give you 6 and 7 respectively. You might be wondering why I haven't used quotation marks for the numbers. Well, this is the significance I was going to tell you about. Quotation marks are used only when there's words or letters or any special characters such as exclamation mark, question mark and stuff. But for numbers in Python, we would not use quotation marks. And this is because carrying out such a print function would give you 3 plus 4, but it wouldn't give you the answer of that operation. So today we learned about algorithms and their importance, what programs and programming are, pseudocode and its use in coding, and the print function. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and share and don't forget to comment below.